Hey everybody, today I'm back with a brand new video, a heavily requested topic. Today we are going to expand on a pre-existing project we created where we integrated Kafka JS into a Nest.js application. We're going to refactor that application to follow best practices for using Kafka in Nest.js. We're going to follow solid design principles as well as add error handling. So we're going to add a dead letter queue to our Kafka consumer. And we're also going to add a retry mechanism to our consumers so that we can retry failed messages. And if they still fail, we will persist the message in a MongoDB database using our dead letter queue so that no messages are ever lost. This is a very important topic if you're actually using Kafka JS in a production setting. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll see you there. Okay, so like I said before, this is a pre-existing project we've already built together. I will leave a link in the description to the previous video, as well as the link to this GitHub repository, which we are going to be building off of. So head to this link here to the GitHub repository. You can just get the URL here to clone the repo, and then go ahead and open up a new terminal window. So make sure you go ahead and CD into the directory where you want to clone this repo, and then we can run git clone to clone the repository. We can see we have the repository here now, and then we can CD into it. So let's go ahead and open the project up in our code editor. So now that our code editor is open, let's go back to the GitHub repository. So if we go into the commit section here, I want to go back to this first commit to where before I pushed all of the new refactored code and error handling so that we can start building the project from the beginning. So make sure you just click into that commit, get this commit hash here, and then we will run git checkout and enter that commit hash. I'm going to go ahead and run yarn to install our dependencies, and then we can run yarn start dev to actually start our Nest.js server. So you can see as our Nest.js server starts up, we're getting a bunch of errors from Kafka JS that says we cannot connect to our Kafka server. And that's because out of the box, I don't have the Kafka server starting up. So we went over how to start up Kafka in the previous video, but I will leave a link in the description to this quick start guide where you can download Kafka and get the commands to run it. So you can see here, we need to run two commands to start up Kafka. We need to make sure we have Zookeeper running and then actually start up Kafka itself. So in a new terminal window, I've gone into the directory where I've installed Kafka and you can see the directory here. And I'm gonna paste in that command to start Zookeeper. So you can see Zookeeper will start up and then we're gonna open up another terminal window, go to the same directory and start Kafka. Okay, I'm in another terminal window in the same directory here. And we just go back to the quick start guide where we get the command to actually start the Kafka server. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And back in our terminal, we can paste it in here to actually go ahead and start the server. So just give this a few seconds to start up. So once your Kafka server has started and Zookeeper looks good, back in our Nest.js app, you can see that our application has actually crashed because Kafka JS could not connect and it doesn't continually retry. By default, it will have five retries, and then if it doesn't succeed after that, it will throw an error. So part of what we're going to add is retry functionality to this so that it will continually keep trying to connect to the server, which is a common use case in production. If the brokers go down, you don't want to throw an error, but you want to keep on retrying until that connection is reestablished. So for now, let's go ahead and rerun yarn start dev on our Nest.js server. And now when we start up, we should have seen two logs from the Kafka JS logger that's saying our consumer has joined the group and the Nest application has successfully started. So now that we have the Nest app up and running, let's take a quick overview of our code as it stands right now. So you can see we have an app controller here that has one route, a get route. And in that app service, we use our producer that we created to produce a message to a topic and subsequently, we have a consumer that we have created, a test consumer, which takes advantage of some infrastructure code that we have written. We have a consumer service that allows us to consume messages and a producer service that allows us to produce messages. We're going to refactor both of these services 
And if you'd like to see how we actually built them, make sure you refer to the previous video. So the first change we're gonna make is if we open up the consumer service itself, we can see that right now, all of our consumer operations are happening inside of this consumer service and it's not very extendable right now. We don't have a way to switch out different consumers if we were to switch our Kafka.js library. And also it makes it difficult to write common code for our consumer, which is what we're gonna wanna do for retrive functionality and dead letter Q. So to fix this, let's go ahead and actually implement an interface for our consumer that all consumers will adhere to and it will make it a lot easier to write a more maintainable consumer. So in our Kafka directory, I'm going to create a new consumer.interface.ts. So let's go ahead and export this interface. I'm gonna call it iConsumer here. And this interface is going to have three methods that all of our consumers will have to implement. It's going to have a connect method that returns a void promise. And that does exactly what you think. It's going to connect to our external brokers. We're going to have a disconnect method as well, which will disconnect from our broker when the application shuts down. Connect will be called when the application first starts up. Okay, and lastly, we're ready to write the consume function itself, which you can think of as almost like a while loop that's going to be called when our app stops, starts up, and we'll always be listening for new messages and actually execute our consumer logic. So consume itself is going to take a function called on message. And so this is gonna be the underlying consumer implementation, which will take the actual message. And we'll say a type any here to keep it generic. We know it'll return promise void, and then the underlying or outer consume method itself, that big while loop I just mentioned, will also return promise void. So this may look a little strange right now. It'll become more clear as we implement it. Right now we just have a consumer service but it's not specific to Kafka.js specifically, so it's not very generic right now. Let's make this more generic by creating a new kafka.js.consumer.ts, and this is going to be a specific implementation of our consumer interface. So we'll export a class called kafka.js consumer, and this is going to implement that contract we just wrote. So our Kafka.js consumer is gonna have three class variables, and this is gonna be data that's private to just this consumer that it's going to need to operate. Firstly, we are going to actually have the connection to our broker, and this is represented by a variable here called Kafka. We can import Kafka from Kafka.js, and then we have the consumer itself. So let's get a handle to the underlying consumer here and import consumer from Kafka.js as well. Lastly, let's add a logger that is specific just to this consumer, which will make it very easy to identify which consumer is logging in our app. So now that we have these three class variables, let's go ahead and actually instantiate them inside of our constructor. As part of our constructor, we're gonna get a bit more information about this particular consumer. So firstly, we are going to get access to the topic uh, metadata surrounding this consumer. So we'll call this topic, and this will be the consumer subscribe topic from Kafka.js. Now notice all this information, these types are specific to Kafka.js. And that's good because we're pulling the specific implementation of the consumer uh, into this specific class and not polluting it in our generic consumer service. So let's keep on going here. We have a topic from Kafka.js, and if we look closely, this gives us the actual topic name inside of an object, which is what we're going to need to subscribe to the topic. And then we're gonna get more configuration about this particular consumer. So this will be of type consumer config. If we look at consumer config, we can see the property we're really interested in is the group ID here. But we also have additional consumer configuration that we can always apply if that particular consumer needs it. So we have this configuration, and then lastly, we're going to get the broker that we are actually connecting to. So now that we have this information, we can instantiate our Kafka here. So let's call new Kafka. 
And we're gonna pass in an array of brokers. In this case, it's gonna be that one broker we were provided. We're gonna instantiate our consumer then by calling this.kafka.consumer and pass in the configuration. And then we're gonna call this.logger is equal to new logger from nest.js common. And we're gonna prefix this logger or give it a label. Firstly, we're gonna specify the topic of this consumer. And then we're gonna specify the group ID of the consumer. So now that we have all this information, this is everything we need to actually write our specific Kafka.js consumer implementation. Let's go ahead and do that and fulfill that contract we created earlier. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the async connect method here. So the connect method is gonna be responsible for actually connecting to the underlying broker. Remember when we first started up our Nest application, if it didn't succeed through an error and it didn't continually retry, well, we wanna allow it to continually retry if it fails. To accomplish that, I'm gonna wrap the connection in a try catch block for now. And in the try block, we're gonna call this.consumer.connect. Okay, so we're trying to connect to the consumer. Kafka.js will try at least five times. If it fails, it'll throw an error and that'll bubble to our error block. If we reach the error block, let's first log it out with our logger and say, fail to connect to Kafka and we will output the log here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna wait at least five seconds before we try to reconnect to give us a little bit of breathing room and not overload our broker. So in order to accomplish this and wait a little bit before we try to reconnect, let's go ahead and write a utility method or function here called sleep.ts. So this sleep.ts is a simple function that returns a promise that's gonna resolve after the timeout we provide it. So this is essentially going to prevent any code from executing until the promise resolves. And this is what we want to do in our catch block here. We wanna call await sleep. We'll pass in 5,000 milliseconds. So after five seconds, we'll be ready to try again and reconnect again. So after that, I'm simply gonna recursively call this.connect again. So it's gonna go over this loop the same exact way. And if it fails to connect, it will try again after five more seconds. So we've written our connect method. Let's go ahead and continue with our disconnect method. So disconnect is gonna be very simple. This is when the app is gonna shut down. We're gonna call this.consumer.disconnect and it's gonna disconnect us from the group. Okay, and lastly, we're ready to write the actual consume function here, which is that while loop that gets called on startup for our consumer to always listen for new messages. It's gonna get that on message handler here, which will take the Kafka.js message itself. We can be more specific with the type because if we're working with the implementation itself now at this point, we know that's still going to return promise void and we can finish writing the actual consume logic here. So when this first gets called at startup, we wanna call this.consumer.subscribe and pass in this.topic so that we actually subscribe to this Kafka topic and the consumer knows to execute the code we're about to write when a new message is put on the topic. So to actually specify that code or implementation, we'll call this.consumer dot run, okay? And dot run is going to actually run our code when we receive a new message. Specifically, it's gonna call this each message property here. And each message is an async callback that we're gonna implement. And we can get access to the message itself as well as the partition that the message was picked up off of. So we have the message and partition I'm gonna call this.logger.debug and write a message that says only when we're in debug mode, we're gonna tell our app that we're processing partition and then pass in the partition we're currently processing just to make it a bit more clear that we're actually processing a message. And for now, let's start off by just calling await.onMessage. So you can see we're actually calling the underlying consumer implementation now this generic on message, and we just pass it the Kafka.js message. So now we've written this implementation of the Kafka.js consumer, and we have this generic each message that will allow us to add 
very abstract retry functionality. So now that we've actually built our Kafka JS consumer class here, let's go ahead and use it inside of our consumer.service. We're going to refactor this more generic consumer service to actually use our implementation by default. So we could have various different consumers. In this case, we will use the Kafka JS consumer that is all adhering to this common interface. So the first change I'm going to make is instead of having this read only consumers array here set equal to an array of Kafka JS consumers, because right now you can see we're importing the consumer type from Kafka JS, I'm going to import our interface I consumer. So our consumer interface, the more generic implementation. So we have a generic array of consumers here. And then I'm going to get rid of the actual Kafka connection here. We're not going to need that. And so let's go ahead and actually delete everything inside of this consume method. And we will also get rid of our current set of arguments here. Instead of having these two arguments, we're going to create a new file in our Kafka directory called Kafka JS consumer options dot interface dot TS. And this is going to be an interface that will describe the Kafka JS specific options that the consumer will take. So we'll call this Kafka JS consumer options. And we know it's going to take firstly the topic. We have type consumer subscribe topic from Kafka JS. We're going to have a config property here, which we have type consumer config. And lastly, we're going to have the on message handler, which we know from our consumer interface we'll take the message and now we can be more specific about this message. We know this is a Kafka message from Kafka JS that will return promise void here. So now that we have the list of options for our Kafka JS consumer, so let's go ahead and provide the destructured object here where we can pull the topic config and on message off of the Kafka JS consumer options that we just created. So now that we have this set of options, we are going to create our Kafka JS consumer. I'm going to set my consumer here equal to new Kafka JS consumer because that's the implementation we've chosen to use for this consumer service. We could always create a factory that returns different consume methods that works with different implementations. But in this case, we're going to use the Kafka JS one. We're going to pass in the topic, the config, and then we need to actually pass in the broker that we are using. So to provide the broker, we could just provide a hard coded URL in, but that's not best practice. We want to allow this to be passed in via a configuration environment variable. So if you've used NestJS before and seen my previous videos, you know we can take advantage of the NestJS configuration package and read from a .m file. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run yarn add at nestjs slash config. So after we install the config module, let's open up our app.module and we're going to add a new import here, the config module dot for root call. We're gonna pass an object here and pass the is global property and set it to true so that we always read in the dot m file in our environment. So now that we're reading in the dot m, let's go ahead and actually create this dot m file. So in the root of our project, we'll create a new file here and we'll call it .m. And we're going to specify our Kafka broker as an environment variable. So we know this Kafka broker running locally is running at localhost 9092. So that's the broker URI we're going to provide here. And when this is running in production or any different environment, we just need to specify this environment variable accordingly. And now back in the consumer service itself and our constructor, since this is an ejectable class, we can inject the private read only config service. And this config service is coming from at netjs config, the package we just installed. So now we have access to the config service we can pass the broker URI to our consumer by calling this.configService.get and then passing in the Kafka broker environment variable that we just created. So now we have all the information we need to create the Kafka JS consumer. We can now call below here await consumer.connect to actually connect the consumer to the broker. And then we're going to go ahead and call await consumer.consume to actually run the consume method and listen for messages. And of course, here, this is where we'll pass in the on message handler coming from our 
lower level consumer. So now we're actually consuming messages. The final step is to push the consumer to our array of consumers so that we can disconnect from it when our application shuts down. So now that we push the consumer, this is everything we need to do to actually consume messages using our new Kafka.js consumer. Lastly, our on application shutdown function here remains exactly the same because we're still iterating through these consumers, the generic consumers here, and calling await consumer.disconnect on them. Okay, so our next step is to actually refactor our test consumer to use our newly refactored consumer service. So if you recall in our app.controller, in our one get hello route. This is where we actually produce a message to the test topic. And then we have a test consumer here that actually listens and logs out the message. So let's go ahead and remove this and actually start from scratch here. In our on module init, we're going to call this dot consumer service dot consume. And now we're gonna pass in a single object. The first of which will be the topic itself. So the topic itself will take an object where we can provide a topic here and this topic, if we look, can take a string or regular expression for the topic name. We know that the topic name here will be test. So we have the topic name and now we can provide the consumer configuration. The important property we need to provide here is the group ID for the consumer. So all consumers in a consumer group with the same group ID will be consuming from a given topic amongst any n number of partitions and those partitions are going to be evenly distributed to all the members in that particular group. So now that we have our group ID we can lastly specify the on message property here which will be our async function that gets the Kafka.js message and once we have the message we're going to go ahead and log the message out. We're going to log the message dot value dot two string here so that we can actually see that we are logging a message out. So now that we've refactored our consumer service and our underlying test consumer, we are now ready to move on to the producer side of things. So just like we implemented a consumer interface, we're going to go ahead and create a new file here called producer.interface.ts. And of course, we're going to move this into the Kafka directory. So we're going to export an interface here called producer or iproducer. And just like we did for the consumer, we're going to specify three functions. First of which will be the connect method, which will return promise void. The disconnect method, which will return promise void as well. And then finally, the produce method, which will take a message of type any and return a promise of void after it has finished producing that particular message. So just like we created a Kafka.js consumer that uses the consumer.interface, we're gonna go ahead and create a Kafka.js.producer as well that will implement our newly created producer interface. So let's go ahead and export a class here called Kafka.js producer that implements I producer. So the Kafka.js producer is going to have three properties very similar to the consumer. So let's go ahead and copy these over from the producer. And the only change we're going to make is to change this property to producer so that we have a handle to the underlying Kafka.js producer here. We're going to have a handle to the underlying broker called Kafka here. And then lastly, we'll have a logger that we can use for this individual producer. So now we can create a constructor that takes in the topic and a broker of type string that we are going to connect the producer to. And inside of the constructor, we're going to set this.kafka equal to new Kafka and provide it the array of brokers. In this case, it'll be our single broker. Then we can create this.producer by calling this.kafka.producer. And lastly, we'll create our logger here by calling new logger and passing in the topic that this producer is responsible for. And make sure that we import logger from nest.js common and not Kafka.js up here. So the first method we'll implement here is the async produce method that takes a message of type message from Kafka.js. And all this is gonna do is call await this.producer Dot send. And we will provide the topic here. This dot topic is the topic we're producing to. 
and our messages here will be an array of messages, which in this case will just be the single message that we're sending. So now we're able to produce messages using this producer. Let's implement our async connect method. And our connect method is going to be exactly the same as the Kafka.js consumer. So let's go ahead and copy over this connect method and go back into our producer and we will paste this in here. The only change we're going to make is we're going to call this dot producer dot connect. Then we'll need to import that sleep function here so that we try to connect the producer and continually retry every five seconds if we fail, just like the consumer. Lastly, we're going to have an async disconnect method here that is just going to call await this dot producer dot disconnect. And that's all it has to do is disconnect from the broker. So now we're ready to refactor the producer service to actually use our Kafka JS producer. In the producer service, I'm going to go ahead and delete our existing class variables and create a new private read only producers variable here. That's going to be a new map that will have a key of type string and a value of type I producer. And make sure we import I producer here from our producer interface. So this is gonna be a list of all the producers in our application with the key being the topic for that producer and the value being the producer itself. So we have a constructor here and we're gonna do the same thing we did in the consumer service. We're gonna inject the config service from SJS config. So we're also going to make sure that we don't implement on module init anymore. We are only going to remove on module init here and replace it with our async produce method here that takes the topic we're trying to produce to and the message itself, which will be of type message from Kafka.js. So inside of here, I'm going to create the producer by calling await this dot get producer, which will take in a topic. So to do this, we are going to create a new private async function called get producer that takes the topic name and it's going to return the producer for that topic. So firstly, we're gonna set a temporary variable here called producer and set it equal to this.producers.get and get the producer that has the key of this topic. So we're gonna check our map first to see if the producer does already exist. If the producer doesn't already exist, then we are going to create a brand new producer by calling new Kafka.js producer and make sure we import Kafka.js producer from dot slash Kafka.js dot producer. And then of course, we're gonna pass in the topic for this particular producer. And then we're gonna call this config service dot get Kafka broker to get the broker for this producer. Now that we've created the producer, we're gonna connect it by calling await producer dot connect. And then lastly, we will add the producers to our map by calling this dot producers dot set, passing in the topic and the actual producer itself so that next time this method is called, we don't have to recreate the producer, it already exists. And finally, we're going to return the producer back to the caller in our async produce method. So now that we actually have the producer in this method, we'll call await producer dot produce and pass in the message we want to produce with it. So for our final step in on application shutdown, we're going to refactor this by creating a for loop here that will iterate over our producer map. So we'll have a const here called producer of this dot producers dot values this will turn an iterable of values in the map, which in this case is all of our producers. So we have each producer, we'll call await producer dot disconnect on it. So this is everything we need to do in our producer service. We're now ready to go inside of our app dot service here where we have our producer right now. And we're gonna refactor this by removing our existing call and we will start from the beginning. We're gonna call await this dot producer service dot produce. So now we're gonna provide two arguments, the first of which being the topic we wanna to produce to, and then the second argument will be the message we wanna produce. In this case, 
it'll have the value of type string hello world. So we now are producing this message and we will return hello world here from our route. So now we're producing this message and we can test out our Kafka infrastructure. So now in Postman, you should be able to execute a get request at localhost 3000 where our route handler is listening and you get that hello world response back. And more importantly, if we look at our terminal logs here where Nest is listening, we can see that when our application starts up, our consumer has joined the group. And when this message is consumed here by our test consumer, we can see our log statement that we put in to the consumer, Kafka.js consumer, where we are logging out the message partition that we're processing. So in this case, we are processing message partition zero. And then we can actually see the hello world response here from our consumer. And now we can also see the hello world log statement. This is the value that we produced using the producer. And then inside of the consumer itself, the test consumer, we're logging that out. So we can see that here. And so if we try this one more time, we will send the message and we'll log it out. So now that we can see our producer and consumer working as expected, let's test out our retry functionality. If you remember in our producer and consumer, we're looping around iteratively until our consumer producers connect and retrying every five seconds so that we always have a retry mechanism in place. Let's go ahead and try that out by shutting down our, our Nest.js server. And then we'll also stop our Kafka server itself. So I run control C to stop my Kafka server here. And now let's start up our Nest.js server again. You can see it's starting up and we are getting error connection refuse logs from Kafka.js because the Kafka server is not listening. Now before, after the retry count reached five, an error would be thrown and our application would crash. Now we're simply logging out that we failed to connect to Kafka and we are retrying from the beginning here. You can see the retry count has restarted. So now if I go and start up my Kafka server. So after a little bit of time, we can see that our consumer has finally joined the group and our Nest app has started successfully. So we can see our retry mechanism working as expected. That's great. And now we're ready to finally implement our consumer message retry functionality in dead letter queue. Okay, so we're now ready to start adding some retry functionality to our Kafka.js consumer. So by default in our each message handler here, you can see we're calling our on message that's passed in as a parameter. And right now, if on message were to throw an error, then our offset for this message would never get resolved. Our consumer would crash and continually retry to process this message over and over again. So what we want to do instead is we want to only retry this maybe three times. And if the message still fails after three times, we want to post this message to a dead letter queue in a MongoDB database so that we can potentially replay it down the line. So the first step is to add that retry functionality. Right now, we don't want to crash the consumer and keep on restarting it continually. We want to add our own retry logic. In order to do that, I'm going to open our terminal up and add a new package called async retry. Then we can scroll up to the top here and import star as retry from async retry. You can see here we get a notification to install the types. So let's go ahead and do that as well. We will run yarn add types async retry. So now we can actually use this retry functionality instead of just calling on message directly. We're going to go ahead and wrap this in a try catch block. So let's go ahead and introduce a try catch block here. And in the try block, we're going to call await retry, where we call retry as a function and we pass in the function that we want to keep on retrying. So in this case, it's going to be an async callback here. And all it's going to do is call our original on message function with the actual message. Now we're going to provide a second parameter here, which will be an options object where we can specify the number of retries to be three and that we're actually going to retry this function up to three times. And if it still fails after three times, this will throw an error and we can do something with that error, like persisting to the dead letter Q. But before we do that, let's add another property here called on retry, which is a function that gets the 
error and current attempt were on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this dot logger dot error and log a message that says error consuming message executing retry and provide the attempt number out of three because that is the number of attempts we are going to try. So now when we do retry, we'll log an error message so that we are aware that this is happening. And lastly, we'll also provide in the error to the log message. So now inside of our catch block, let's go ahead and log out the error here. We will say error consuming message adding to dead letter Q. So we're gonna let the application know that this message has failed after three retries, and we're gonna persist this to a dead letter Q. And we'll also pass in the error here that was thrown. And then we're gonna call await this.add message to dead letter Q and pass in the message. So let's go ahead and add a new private async method here called add message to dead letter Q that takes in the message of type Kafka message. And this is where we're gonna actually interact with our database and persist this message. So I've gone ahead and added a new directory here called database. And this is a folder that I have created and walked through in my Nest.js starter repository, which I have a separate video on. If you would like access to this Nest.js starter repository with these database files that allow us to interact with the MongoDB database, I will leave a link in the description to that Nest.js starter repository that contains all of this code. The important part is, is that we are initializing our Mongoose module and passing in a MongoDB URI from our environment. We also have a database service that our consumer will use to get a database handle where we are injecting the connection from Mongoose. So you can see we're getting some errors because we need to install some additional dependencies to use this database package, Nest.js, Mongoose, and Mongoose itself. So after installing those dependencies, you might need to restart your Nest.js server or upgrade your TypeScript version to the latest version if you see any type errors as a result of this database module. If you see the application start up successfully like this, we're ready to continue on. And now we can go back into the Kafka JS consumer and we can scroll up to our constructor here and we can specify that this Kafka JS consumer needs to have the private read only database service from our database package we just added. It needs to have this dependency provided to it. And then in our add message to dead letter Q method, we're going to call await this.database service dot get db handle to get the database handle. We're going to call collection to use the dead letter Q collection. And then we'll call insert one. So this insert one will add a new document to this collection. We'll add a value property here, which will be the value from the message itself. And then the topic will be this dot topic dot topic. And lastly, make sure we scroll up and actually add a comma here to our database service. And now we can see we are correctly inserting this message to the dead letter Q collection if it fails after we retry up to three times. So we're gonna to need to go back into the consumer service here and we can see it's now complaining because we're not providing the database service. So in the consumer service, we can inject the database service directly, just like we did in the Kafka.js consumer, we'll add it to our constructor and then we will pass in the this.database service to our Kafka.js consumer. And finally, we need to go into the Kafka module directly here and add an imports array. And now we're gonna add the database module to our imports array so that we can actually use the database service. And now our final step in the database module, this expects the MongoDB URI. So we're gonna have to go to our .env and add the MongoDB URI. So this is gonna be equal to MongoDB colon slash slash localhost and then we'll provide the database name. In this case, I'll call it Nest.js Kafka Best Practices. So now back in our application, after it restarts, we can see the database module has been initialized as well as the Mongoose core module, and then we've started the app successfully. So we're ready to try out our error handling mechanism. And the best way to do this is to open our test.consumer. And after we log out the message, we're gonna go ahead and 
actually throw an error here. That's called test error to see what our consumer error handling actually does when an error is thrown from a consumer. We should see it retry up to three times and then persist this message to the database. So let's open up our terminal. And we'll also have to open up Postman so we can actually produce a message to this topic. And we will send a request at localhost 3000, a get request. Once we send this off, we get our hello world response. And then we'll go back to the terminal where we can see that we started to process this message. We see the log statement, and then we can see our test consumer, error consuming message executing retry one out of three executing retry two out of three, three out of three, and then finally that error is thrown, and then our error handling adds the message to the dead letter Q, and we log out the final error. So let's go ahead and actually verify that this message is in the database. I've connected to my local MongoDB database, and I can see a Nest.js Kafka best practices database here, a dead letter Q collection, and here we can see one message that's been added to the collection. We can see the topic here is the test topic we just produced to, and we can see the value is binary data saved in MongoDB. We can easily read this data back in our application, call toString on it to get the value, and do whatever we'd like, potentially replay this message at a later time. So this has been our refactoring of Nest.js Kafka and showing you some of the best practices around error handling. I hope this video has been helpful. Let me know what other future videos you'd like to see, and I will catch you in the next one.